I'm Mosca Flux, and this is One on One with LP. <laughs> children had a better opportunity than she had. She sacrificed everything. She didn't even know the language. Like, I taught my mother how to read and write in English when I was a kid because I went to kindergarten. And, you know, well, I, honestly, I I, um, I learned English first because in order to, like, get into kindergarten, I was four. You had to be five. But the only way they would take me is if I spoke English and I learned how to speak English off Sesame Street. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sesame Street. <laughs> So yeah. PBS really works. Yes, it does. <laughs> PBS is life. <laughs> yeah. So y'all need to pay your taxes um, for, for public television. Oh, yeah. Keep yeah. Elmo alive. Like <laughs> All right. So so people don't know. They know now. You are, you're you're mainly known for being a female artist. Um, yeah. I know you do hosting. You do a lot of other stuff. But, you know, your, your number one thing that most people know you is, is from uh, being a female artist. So what do you find hard about being a female artist versus just a regular artist? I can only speak from my own personal experiences and um, being a woman, being a female artist, you know, um, a femme C at that, like you automatically do not get the respect that a man gets if he walks up somewhere and says, yeah, I rap. Everybody's like, oh, her, cool, yeah, let me like get your IG. I walk up and say, I rap. I am immediately like tested, like on site. Well, let me hear something. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like they don't treat men like that. I always have to consistently prove myself being a FMC. Um, so that's distinctively different, um, male and female. Um, and then I'm Latina on top of that, you know, so I, I get some slack for that too. Um, it's just a lot. It's a, it's a lot of different things. Um, then you got the other aspect, you know, the sexual aspect where people think that because you're a female artist, you got to sell your body. Um, you have to, you know, portray yourself a certain way um, in order in order for you to be able to market yourself. And that is probably one of the hardest things because I have integrity you know so um i'm not gonna be one of those girls that um wants to like you know be overly explicit with her lyrics um you know or with showing her body because i'm a mother you know what i'm saying and i have a daughter um so it's just it's, it's a lot of different things and those things may not bother other fem c's you know they that that might not be um you know a conflict of interest for them so that's why i say i can only speak from my experience it's, it's funny you said that because that's something I want to go into. Like in hip hop, when it comes to females, it's like, you know, sex sales. We're in the age of, I guess, currently now, the WAPs and the, the WAPs. Cardi B's. It, and, it is uh, what it is. Guys, they, they definitely have a, uh, a certain kind, but you hardly ever see females come out that's like really based on um, their lyrical skills. Like, you can have lyrical skills, but, uh, you know, let me see that ass. Mm. And it seems like it's it's more of that. So do you yeah. find it? Do you find it hard not being the, like? Because you have you know you have hips and you have curves. So do you like do I decide to do that or do like I said before do I keep my integrity and continue mm. to go uh, the way that I go? What's the hardest part between the two? 
it, it's 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 a it's a constant battle of um, doing what's most comfortable for you, but then you're also like, I gotta win. You know what I'm saying? So it's about finding a balance. You know, so I do certain things that are sexy, but I just make sure that I keep it classy. You know, it, it's I don't ever want to look back when I get older and be like, you know, that or, or my children's children and be like, oh, she was and looking raunchy or something. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't want that. If if you call me back. And, and, and this is something um, Rob Digger said to me, dead ass. She was like, you don't want to come back in 20 years and your lyrics be so crazy explicit that it doesn't even make sense how you look when you're grown, you know, and what you're talking about. You want it to still be relevant, you mm -hmm. know, 20 years from now. And I felt that. So I was just like, you know what? Um, she said, you're taking the, the harder route. You know, but um, because we know the easy route is it, it, it's just being explicit and raunchy or whatever else, you know what I'm saying? Because as you said, sex sells. Um, but I'd rather keep my integrity, you know what I'm saying? That's just who I am. That's just who I am, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I feel like you should respect my artistry based off my talent, just just period. And they don't even do, they don't even do R&B singers like this, man. Yeah. Why, why, only, why only female rappers? Why we all gotta be strippers? Yeah, I mean, it does seem, and it's funny, because, like, Rod Digger's always been one of my favorite uh, hey. artists, and, like, her first CD is, like, the, one of the best that people be sleeping on, Rod, I'm just telling you. But she was, she was never the type that came across like that, but her skills... Yo, superseded yeah, everybody, but, you know but, what I'm saying? But it does so. seem like we're in an industry where that's secondary when it comes to the mm, female side of things. Right. Like, yeah, you, you can rap, but like I said... Especially with female rappers, like, yeah. just us, specifically, man. Like, and you know it, it's been it's been hard to um, make that change and, and create that curve. You know what I'm saying? Where like you know, classy would be back into um, female hip hop, um, but that's what I'm here for. You know what I'm saying? So you still think it's possible? That yes, in yes, because I exist. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Gotcha, I exist. Gotcha, gotcha, I'm that gotcha. balance. I'm here. So um, all, all that needs to happen is that I need to be heard. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's still, I think it's still a place of... Uh, I think people still want to hear realness, you know what I'm saying? I think people still want to hear real rap, reality rap, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know, me personally, like, I, I like, um, like Rhapsody, I, I like, I like her a lot. And it's, to me, it's just, if, if I can drive down the street and pump your stuff, I can't drive down the street pumping Cardi B, talking about licking his... <laughs> I can't pull to the gas station. Like, I, mean, girl, like, I love Cardi, though. Like, I love... Look, yeah. I'm not a hater on it. You know what I'm saying? At all. Like, I mean, I, get your I money. Get your money. Right, right, right. right. I, lo I love what they do. I love Megan Thee Stallion. I love Cardi. I love Nicki. Um, and they are very sexually explicit. It's just not who I am. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that doesn't mean that, you know, hey, that's your taste. That's your flavor. And you do it well. I just... I couldn't do it. There's a lot of ways I, you can get it, it right. There's a different. There's different ways to get the bag. Yeah, know? yeah. It's funny because like with with guy rappers, you could have back in the days you had the gangster rap, you had the Fresh Prince, you had the Native Tongues, mm. you had all these, these different, different, these categories. different categories. Yes. But women now, they're all they trying to put us on the one to, lane, to one and then it's yeah. like, and then when you start talking to the people in the industry, um, these A and Rs and stuff, that's exactly all they looking for. What are you willing to take off? Yeah. Crazy, That's right? crazy. So it makes it really, really hard um, for someone like me to like really bust them. Okay. So we'd have to be like really um, independent on our, our Nipsey Hustle shit, and, and that's what type of time we are. So how is this? How would you say the hip hop scene is in North Carolina? You're you you live in North Carolina. You perform. Uh, how would you say the, the scene is here? The scene is. It, you know what? It was crazy. Is that like? NC got crazy talent, you know what I'm saying? Like, we got some crazy major talent, but it feels like we're not breaking through. Like, we we not, you know, somehow we're like, there, there's so much talent, and I don't know, people just not really coming together to really take things to the next level. It's like, we do so much in our city. You can perform all the venues here, but then what's next? What, what takes us to the next level? And we're not getting those type of opportunities. Unless we move out of state. Most of the people that made it from NC left NC. Mm -hmm. I gotta leave NC. I'm sorry. I love it. I gotta go. <laughs> do you feel like the, the area doesn't care as much for you until after you leave? Like, I know it's like Big radio facts. stations. Yeah, I know it's like facts. radio stations. They don't, 
Like they can love uh, the baby or J Cole like after the fact. Right, they didn't love him when they was here though. Yeah, yeah. So that that seems to be how much of an issue have you seen that being with like uh, like I, I use radio stations because you know ninety seven point five is a radio station and mainly people know this around mm-hmm. this area. And I think maybe they got a little bit better with reaching out to the artists, but they not. I don't think they're as good as they should be. But how hard do you think that makes it for an artist that they only care about you after the fact? It makes it really hard because, um, you know, you, you're supposed to really have love in your city first before you go and branch out somewhere else. You know what I mean? Um, but then you, you come, like, you're not even being heard here. So you're not helping the artists from here, like, you know, get exposed, you know, to other areas. So it's like you really have to go somewhere else and invade someone else's market to get put on and you'll go somewhere else like Atlanta and they will show you so much love you'll go to New York and perform and they'll show you so much love um you'll be here and I don't know if it's because we so overly saturated with artists you know what I'm saying and a lot of times when I go to shows the audience is more artists than than fans you know what I'm saying I don't know if that's what it is you know but it's just it's just not happening you know I don't know we gotta do better okay so w- one thing that I know about in this area if you're an artist in this area, they have they have award shows uh, oh, right. from the started way back with the NCUMAs. Now I guess like in this area, uh, Charlotte has Queen City. You know we have the oh, CMAs yeah. award. Now I remember one time you were um, you won a CMA uh, you won a CMA award for I think Artist of the Year. Is that correct? Yeah, best yeah. female hip hop artist of the year. And it seemed like the, after that fact, you was doing just as much as you was doing before. But you seem to no longer get nominated or whatever. So does it? With I'm, I'm asking with those award shows, is it more based on the skills or, or is it more based on politics? Um, I can I can only give you I don't I'm not on the back end. You know what I'm saying of those award shows. You know what I mean. I can only give you my observation. You know what I'm saying. Okay. So my observation was this: I was like nominated three times i won once after that i saw other people that um may have not been you know cool with me per se you know what i'm saying that were now on a board that was nominating the peers but i didn't even get nominated after that and then the world looked at that i didn't say shit because i didn't care but everybody else was like that's bananas if you mention hip-hop and nc you damn you sure gonna mention Mosca Flux, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's no and that's no hype. But um, I do see that things changed. You know, the year that I won, I felt was like the most fairish year. Um, I was I was new on the scene, like um, you know, when I first heard about the CMAs and stuff like that. Um, and I heard negative things, you know, but I was still enthusiastic about you know being nominated and being appreciated by my peers. Um, somewhere along the line, things changed. A lot of other people got their hands involved and stuff like that. And then, like, ever since then, I've never been nominated ever since. You know what I'm saying? But I got nominated for a lot of other things. I, I got the trophies at the crib. But with it, but that, so, <laughs> so it's okay, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But do you feel so like, okay. with, being the fact that everybody that everybody likes to be an artist and everybody's not going to get a Grammy status or this, that, yeah, or yeah. So when you have awards shows like CMA's, uh, uh, Queen City Awards, Durham, what the, uh, what's the one? Bull City Awards. Bull City Awards, stuff like that. Do you feel like it should not be based on the politics side of things? And listen, we know politics and everything, but shouldn't it really be based on what the artist has done and what they're doing? What you know, that's what award shows are supposed to be. It used to be based on the voting. You know what I'm saying? So if people got enough votes and stuff, then then you won. You know, then you knew that person had a good, um, strong fan base. You know, and, and and it's important that it be fair because, you know, that, that represents, um, you know, the opinion of your peers, um, your real fans, your real peers, you know, not just um, a handful of people um, that sit on a panel and, and, and just decide. Um, but, you know, these, these are these are local um, award shows and, and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? So, no, nah, it shouldn't be based on politics. It should be based on your talent, dead ass, period. Do you feel yeah. like the... Certain people can try to blackball you at NC? Um, they can try, but who gives a fuck? Like, just keep pushing, keep doing what you're doing. Like, yeah. um, I that has performed all up and down the East Coast. No one is stopping this train. <laughs> like, um, I've heard people say that, but I just feel like 
That's just petty. You can't, you cannot in no way, shape, or form. This is me spiritually talking. Like, I cannot say that someone um, has that type of power, control, where they can, uh, you know, control my destiny. Like, like if, even if you were a doorway to get to my success and I can't walk through that door, it wasn't intended for me to walk through that door. You know what I'm saying? God intended me to walk through a different door. Who knows what kind of, like, shady shit comes with, with you in that situation and that door. You know what I'm saying? Walk around that door. You see a brick wall? Walk around the brick wall. Find another way. You can't sit there. A lot of people cry, whine, complain, and be like, Oh, man, I'm not getting these shows because these people... I don't give a damn. I'm still getting shows. I'm still eating. I'm still good. None of that should affect you. Now, with you getting these shows, you're, you're, you're mainly booking your own shows, is that correct? Yes, I no longer have a manager. So, okay. everything I've been doing in the last, what, two years has been me. So, let's talk managers. Oh, okay? Let's talk, let's, talk, let's, talk, let's talk managers. Hell now, I know, no. I know that, um, like I said, I follow you and I saw so at one point you was with uh, what, Collins Ward. Is that how? Is that? Oh, yeah. You was with oh, them. me back. And sure. then after that, you was with, uh, what's her name? Um, uh, Jennifer Rondo. Jennifer who? Ryan Gold. Ryan Gold or whatever. So let's let's talk. Let's talk managers. Why didn't it, why did it, why didn't those work? Let's start with Colin Boys. Why didn't it work? Um well Colin Boys, like, I don't wanna really say um like Dave, he was the one that ran Colin's Boys. Um, I don't really wanna say he was like our manager, you know. Um he was more like the investor and we was the team, but we were all individual artists. Like I really had a vision for us to like be like the next bad boy. Like we was all fire, we was all dope. Um, but in that situation, it didn't work because there was so many artists and there was not enough management to go around. So he solely had his focus on one individual artist and that took away from all the other artists. Of course, I continue to just keep floating and doing what I'm doing as I was when they found me. Um, um, because like I said, you, you can't stop your train, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So, um, after that, you know, when, when, when things hit the fan, I was just like, this is not in the best interest for me. I met um, Jennifer. Um, and at that time, like, I went off with Jennifer and another um, manager. It was two managers. It was her and um, Zaki um, out of uh, Atlanta or whatever. So, they were both managing me. She was here and he was there and he had, like, certain connects or whatever. So I went with them and I told them, I was like, yo, as soon as I like get on, like I'm reaching back for my team, you know what I'm saying? But between then and and a and, and few months later, between him and my manager, like my new manager, they became enemies and shit, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that didn't happen. I don't, I don't know. They just, they, I don't know what happened, but that was between them. They, they had a spat or whatever. Um, with, with Jenny, Man, Jenny was like like a like a sister to me, um, but that's now I learned that that's probably like the, the worst mistake I could have made um, because you can't you you can't do business like that. You know what I'm saying? You got to keep uh, friendship and and business separate because um, you know, like Nip said, when you my boy, it's harder for me to tell you hell no, I fuck you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's facts. And and I felt that, so it's just like damn. That that's why that was a really uh, tough situation. Um, but I had to do what was uh, what was best for me. So there, I let I let that go, and and then I went back to you know just being an independent artist, you know, and then starting from scratch, really. And if, do you feel like it's either do your own stuff or have a manager? Um, at this point, I'd just rather do me right now because like I don't need a manager right now. You know what I'm saying? If I if I get to the point where, like where I can't handle all of my bookings and stuff that I got going on, then I need a manager, or at least I need a manager that can actually get me to the next level and and can really connect me with you know the right people to get put on. Um, but other than that, nah, I don't I don't need a manager that's gonna take twenty percent of my cut. That ain't gonna do shit for me. Okay. All right. So again, you or you when you said about um. Before about being an artist, you're a mother. You have that stuff going on. You have a regular life. How hard is your? How hard is it controlling your regular life versus uh, your music and not losing yourself and just saying, you know what, I don't want to do music no more. Life is too hard. How are you keeping the balance? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. 
some days, you know, I ain't gonna lie to you. Um, there's days, you know, I ain't getting no younger, you know what I'm saying, that I'm like, should I even continue? But um, there's other days where I'm like, if I don't have music, I don't have life, you know. Um, this is my passion. This is what I love to do, and I'm hella skilled, and I really feel like, damn, you know, like, I'm, I'm really, like, at my peak. Like, I really feel like, um, I found my place, I found my niche, and, and my, my lyrical skill right now is, is, like, at its best. Um, so that part of me is like, nah, bitch, that's why you can't quit, you know what I'm saying? And then I look at my children, and I'm like, yo, I couldn't have, um, sacrifice all this time, these years, travel, time away from them, um, studio time, shows, all of the above, um, that's time, you know, that I invested, you know, to give them a better life, so, and then and that is, like, also keeping me driven, like, I can't just quit, I can't give up, I gotta ride this until the wheels fall off, you mm -hmm. know, um, so, yeah, it's a constant daily battle, you know, you got bills to pay, you got to work, you got to come home, you a mother, you a wife, you know what I'm saying? You got things to do, and then you also have to find time for you, you know, and then music is that time for me. So if I don't have that, like, I don't know what I do. Um, but yeah, yeah, that that's it. It's just an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> you talking to a Gemini, so, um, you know. Oh, Lord. Like, <laughs> All right, so, so when we talk about life, when we talk about, you know, ups and downs, um, let's talk about your divorce. Let's, let's, dig, let's dig in there a little bit. Let's, let's go ahead and dig in there. That was bit. ugly. So let's, let's talk about, um, I guess to start with, at one point in time, if anybody don't know, you were, you was married to, uh, to another artist in the area. I mean, whether you put his name on, that's that total of you. But um, most people that know you know who you were married to. And they also know that at one point in time, you guys were looked at like a like a hip hop power couple. Like people, when they, they would see one, they would see the other. You know, you guys would be on each other's trash. It just it just looked like a great vision from the outside going in, motivating people to um, you know even feel like oh I can be with somebody in the industry. Yada 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 yada. So that didn't work out. Hell no. So let's <laughs> I'll, I'll let you dive into what what, what happened in this situation. What didn't happen? What, um, what didn't happen? Um, everything in what it seems. And, and there was a time that, um, we were very happy. But that was a time where I didn't really know who he was. And sometimes you just don't know someone, you know what I'm saying, until you got more time. And we move really fast. Um, got married very fast, and we just uh, oh, I just thought that you know it, it was gonna be it was gonna be great. I saw red signs like red signals and shit, and I um I ignored them because I just wanted to love that damn bad. Mm -hmm. Um, I know a lot of y'all can relate to that shit. So, um, yeah, the music shit was cool, all of that, but there's a lot that comes with that. Um. A lot of groupies, a lot of you know, always um, third party situations. It was it this always felt like every quarter of the year it was like always a third party situation. Um, just mad infidelity, um, mental, emotional, and physical abuse. It got really ugly. Um, it got really ugly um, to the point um, like my daughter had to call the police on him. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It, it, it got like that. Um, and he dead ass choke a bitch until she pass out. You know what I'm saying? So I don't give a fuck what he says. Um, he called me a million horror slurs and shit all over the internet. I kept it classy um, the entire time. But that's the truth. You know what I'm saying? That's the truth. Um, no one is going to sit around and continue to endure um, that type of abuse um, forever. You know what I'm saying? Like you can break them down, um, you know, mentally and emotionally. Um, but I thank God for Will, you know what I'm saying? I thank God for um, his grace and his love because he picked me back up. Somehow I found the strength to get back up. And, and it was the day my daughter had said enough and she called the police, you know what I'm saying? And when it snapped, like, nah, this, this is affecting my children, you know what I'm saying? 
that's that was it. It's enough. You know what I'm saying? Like you did it not behind four walls, you know what I'm saying, but in front of my family. Mm-hmm. That's too far, you know what I'm saying? Um, and that's what people don't know. Like a lot of people just think, you know, they listen to and it, and it goes deeper, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm still I'm skimming real surface right now, you know what I'm saying? Real surface right now. It's it's a lot deeper. Plenty of stories I can I can tell y'all, you know what I'm saying? But um I know that a lot of people made assumptions based off the things that um that he said and, and the rumors that he spread, um, you know, things that he said, you know, that I, that I cheated, you know, and that's why he choked me. Not nah, hell, this motherfucker been choking the fuck out of me. You know what I'm saying? That's why I cheated. Um, and then I told him to his face and I'd do it again. Um, that probably saved my life, dead ass. Um, at times I remember, like, you know, when, when I felt guilty for it and I had good friends that said, nah, bitch, you did what you had to do to survive. survive you know what I'm saying um but yeah um finally got out of that situation and 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 there's a lot that goes into um a lot of people like why don't you just just leave and shit like that um let's go there let's go there um when I met him I was still an immigrant I didn't have a green card I've been in this country since I was a little girl and um my mother stayed because they told us we could go back home after they like blew up our whole country and shit. Um, but there was nothing to go home to. So my mother stayed past our visa and I should expired. So I've been surviving like, you know, like, you know, under radar like my whole life. But I grew up like an American, so this is home to me, you know what I'm saying? But Tom was running out because laws were changing and I no longer was gonna be able to like have a license or anything, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't going to be able to have the simple shit like bank accounts and mortgages and shit like that. So he knew, he knew that was, um, you know, an ailment for me and that I could possibly be deported and taken from my children. So he said, I'll marry you. I'll marry you to keep you in the country because I plan on being here anyway. And I thought that was honorable, you know what I'm saying? Um, But now when I look back, no, that was that was the trap. That was the trap. You know what I'm saying? And then it was like, now I can treat you however I want to treat you because you made me a little immigrant bitch. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it was. And I had to eat shit until I got my fucking green card. And that's why I didn't leave. So, um, that's the truth. You know, that's the truth. No fluff. Okay. Yeah, I put put it all out there because I've heard a lot of things. Uh, since the situation happened, it, it's amazing to me how I heard, you know, just like you said before, I heard you was the blame. Um, I heard, I don't really see a situation where it, it's a, where you can blame a woman for physically abusing them. But that's, that's neither here or there. It's, it's kind of funny when I, when I hear that. Um, it's never okay. I don't care what she did. It's yeah. never okay. You know, it's never okay. And that, and that wasn't the truth. That was not the first time that man put his hands on me. You know what I'm saying? And, it had, and, and a lot of times when he did it, yeah, he, it was a different, like, I've been in an abusive relationship before, you know what I'm saying? I've been married before, you know, the father of my children, and he was abusive. But he was a different type of abusive, you know what I'm saying? Like, if he hit me in my body or something like that, and I fell and I was hurt, he had a conscience, you know what I'm saying? He'd pick me up and say I'm sorry, you know, bring flowers or whatever the hell, you know what I'm saying? This motherfucker was a different type of abusive, you know what I'm saying? He didn't hit me in my body. He went for my throat every single time. He took my breath away. You know what I'm saying? He tried to kill me. That's different. You psycho. Fuck mm-hmm. out of here. And he was a pathological liar. There's too many psychotic ass traits there. You know, so nah, nah, it's never okay. It's it's never okay. And and even after you choke someone and they're on the ground, you still yelling at them and cursing them the fuck out and shit. You know what I'm saying? There's no snapping back. Nah, my life was in danger. My daughter had, listen, if, if you do it in front of the, the, my mother and my three kids were standing there. He was on top of me until the police arrived. No. Nah. There's, there's no, there's no excuse. There's, there's no excuse. So. That was not the first time. So how hard was it, you know, being that you guys were connected through music and you, I'm pretty sure you had some of the similar connects and stuff like that. So did you, did you have a, I guess how many people you had did you have to cut off? Cause I guess when it comes to situations like that, you got people that choose sides. They, but I'm gonna believe her, or I'm gonna believe him, 
Most people like, oh, I've known him too long. There's no way he did it. Yada yada yada. So how how hard was it for you when I guess when people let's say somebody you love or you care about shows his side, how hard was it to still be um, I guess moving forward with what you were doing? You know, honestly, like um, I let people be who they are. You know what I'm saying? And I and I didn't let it um, bother me. A lot of people, honestly, like. They didn't, they didn't, um, you know, if, even if they sided with him, um, I, I didn't see, I didn't see people actually choose sides. They played like both sides. Um, they try to be cool on both ends and not, you know, like be in between the situation or whatever. Um, cause they like, even if they knew him first, they still had a chance to know me and know like what kind of person I was, you know what I'm saying? So the things that were being said just just didn't equate, you know what I'm saying? It didn't add up. Um, so people still chose to be cool with me and those that didn't really didn't even matter to me anyway. You know, I still had, you know, I had my own fan base. I had my own people. I had my own connects. I got my own studio. I got, you know what I'm saying? So I was still okay. Okay. Do you feel like pain can, can feel your music? Absolutely. I mean, hella shit. I made a whole album. <laughs> <laughs> And it was real emotional. It was it was dead ass emotional, yo. Yeah. yeah. So the Spanish you, Fly Volume One, by the way, you know that's oh yeah, that's, that's, that's everywhere. Plug, that's everywhere, plug, you know. Plug, Spotify, you know. iTunes, Moscaflex.com. Make sure you know y'all pull it up. Spanish Fly Volume One, Volume Two is coming. This one's gonna be a little bit lighter because you know I'm a little happier these days. <laughs> so yeah, so so it, it's funny that you even say that. So your your environment. Do you feel like it can dictate what kind of music that you put now? Like a lot of like, I'm a huge Mary J. Blige fan, but you put Mary J. Blige when she was on crack and when she was when she was messing with KC. What? That was the best, best music. music. Like, I literally Yo, didn't want her to be happy because this music messed was not up. Like That's real messed up. It's messed up. But a lot of people said that though, like, and she got me through my childhood. You know, I love Mary. Um, yes, yes, I, I, I do agree. Um, and and maybe it's how you set the tone that people just expect you to stay in that lane, you know? Um, and she set that tone, you know, that heartbreaking pain, that love. Um, but then all of a sudden she just went real butterfly happy on us and we just, we wasn't ready to switch lanes with her like that, you know? Yeah. So with that being said, you, your music a lot of times has been, you know, you got the hard stuff and you got everything else, but now you're a little bit more happier. How is moving forward? How is your music is going to change? Um, I just think that, um, it, it may not be as personal. Um, still be the same, still like um, real, still hard, and 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 still and and and, and now I I'm trying to make sure that I do more music that's um, you know commercial sounding, you know mm -hmm. um, mainstream because a girl needs radio play, okay. Um, so it will be some of that. Uh, I ain't going pop or nothing, but um, you know just probably not as emotional and personal as uh, volume one. This one, we're gonna have fun, we're gonna turn up, um, and we're just gonna give you some, some good bars. Okay, so last thing to the viewers, anybody watching this, what do you want them to know about Mosca Plus? Man, um, I'm resilient as hell. And I'm a real ass person, like, um, and I'm a good woman. That's one thing I always say. I want the world to always know um, that I'm a good woman. I'm a good person. Um, I want the world to know that you know, no matter like, no matter what it looks like, no matter what the odds are, like, believe in yourself. You know what I'm saying? Love yourself enough to give yourself the opportunity to try. You know, um, because that's where I am in my life right now. Like, no matter what it looks like. Um, I'm gonna continue to strive. Okay. Give everybody your handle so they can know where to um, follow you, where to find you. Make sure that you follow me um, on Instagram, um, Mosca Flux, M O S C A F L U X. Hopefully, LP like puts it down there at the bottom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, graphically, I'm gonna add it. You know, add it down there. You know what I'm saying? Um, website is moscaflux.com everything is moscaflux like itunes spotify amazon everything is moscaflux youtube make sure you subscribe please subscribe 
Um, you know, got a lot of new things coming. I'm um, planning on doing a podcast as well. So y'all make sure that y'all just, just follow the kids. Stay tuned for the journey. All right. Appreciate you for coming through. Most good Thank you, LP. One-on-one -on -one with LP, guys. Yeah.